And, you know, I really think transparency is a very big key in why people do not trust government in general. They don't trust government. They don't trust law enforcement because there's a lack of transparency there. And that is one thing that I want to fix in state government by, you know, the people are the ones that elect their leaders. They're using the people's money, taxpayer money, to do the jobs that they're doing. This is all about the people, but yet the people can't see what's going on. They can't see what's been done. So bringing in transparency such as like Department of Revenue, anytime someone looks up your license plate or, you know, looks up your information on the Department of Revenue, if we had accurate, you know, uh, up-to-date software where we could actually give people notices that somebody has looked up their license plate or their, uh, or their address or anything, you know, their, their uh, government ID or their, their driver's license. Um, they should know about those things and, and giving the tools to the police to be able to look up things when they need it and being able to do certain surveillance if it's necessary um, so that they're safer going into areas, but also letting those people know that, hey, you have been looked up in some way by this police officer uh, or this elected official or this state agency so that the people are aware what's going on with the system. And really a lot of it stems to just updating our software and making it more modern. And in 2020, we should have up-to-date software, but I'll tell you from working in state government, it is so behind the times. And I don't know why that is. It's almost like they don't want the transparency to be there. They want it dissected between the state agencies where you can't look and see what the other agencies are doing. And that makes absolutely no sense to me. You should be able to see what everybody in state government is doing, because again, that's our money that's being used and we should be able to look that up. Um, so while providing police officers more tools to do their job and more transparency for the people to see what is going on, I think that people will start to trust law enforcement more. But I also think that getting more law enforcement out to the communities and doing things in the communities, besides just pulling people over or showing up when there's an issue, police officers need to be more ingrained in that community where you know who your police officers are in that area. And there's ways to do that, but you have to have the funding and you have to have the support to be able to get them in there. Overall, I fully support our, our law enforcement in the state of Missouri. They're great people. 99.99% of all police are great folks. Now, there are bad apples in that system. Uh, we've already got place, things in place to punish those folks, to weed them out. We need to start enforcing them. There is no room for some of the things that we've seen nationwide in Missouri. You know, there, there's, there's no, no room for racist cops. There's no room for violent cops. We need folks that are good and want to be there for the job. And like I said, 99.99% of all police are those good folks. They just want to make their communities better. So we've got to help them and uh, help, you know, police commissioners, help, help police chiefs, help, uh, help county sheriffs to get those folks out of that, that are not good out of there because they want them out too. So just encourage police to do a good job, make sure that they have the funding that they need and work with communities to find out where the problems really lie. I mean, sometimes it just boils down to asking folks in a community what the real problems are. You know, I'm going to be sitting in Jefferson City. I'm not going to necessarily know what's going on in Jackson County. You know, I'm not going to know what's, what's, what's going on in St. Louis County all the time. I'm going to have, I'm going to have sources there. I'm going to have, you know, state police and, and county, county officials that are going to call me and let me know. But the ultimate people that can do something and make a change are within those communities. And we need, we need to empower them to do that. It's a huge role to play. I, I think one, to do that outreach, I, I think again, it's why early on uh, we were building relationship with the clergies in St. Louis, Kansas City, and some of the worst areas up there. I think you really go into those communities and what you find out for years, that there's a lot of people out there, there's a lot of nonprofits out there uh, trying to do some good things, but the reality of it is it's not really getting to the people that need it the worst. And look, any more government programs that we do, we need to really think about what's the end result of that government program. But, but here's going to be what I believe to be the answer to that. Until we really face the idea that early childhood development, how are you going to give these kids an opportunity to get an education at a very early age? How are you going to get them to a school? How are you going to get them to a church? How are you going to get them to a safe setting where they can learn? And then how are you going to give them the skills they need to get a job? That take, That's a long-term plan, but that's like 18 years ago, you'll see your first big results of that. But if you don't do that, we're kidding ourselves if we just keep doing the same old programs we're doing, the same old system that they're trapped in today, and not giving them an opportunity to get out. That's why the workforce development and the education piece is so important to me.
Well, I mean, there, there are some actions that obviously go beyond qualified immunity. And it's, it's been proven in the courts already that, you know, if, if you're violent and uh, you kill someone for no reason, obviously your, your qualified immunity is gone in that point. So I would like to see the police of Missouri be held accountable for their actions. And I think for the most part they are, we've just got to enforce it. I mean, we've already got the laws. We just, we just need to enforce what we already have and we need to give police chiefs the power to take care of these problems. You know, we need it. We need to give police commissioners the power to, to get rid of these problems. And you know, your County sheriffs, uh, local police chiefs, municipalities, if you've got an officer, that's a problem, you need to get rid of them. By and large, they're all good people, but we, we have to weed out the problems. You know, I, I think anytime you're in local law enforcement, I, I wore a uniform for 22 years. You, you can always find ways to do things better. But the reality of talking about defunding the police or doing away with police officers is not even practical, uh, to be right honest about it. And what we got to do is figure out ways, how do we get more police officers on the ground? How do you get them more involved in the communities? Uh, I know in my day w when I was sheriff of Polk County, we put a heavy emphasis on community policing, which means boots on the ground. Officers actually walking through neighborhoods, building relationships with business owners, with civic groups, with the churches. I think you need to see more of that. I, I think we need to go back to that style. We know it worked. Uh, and, and the other thing is you got to get people in that profession that are professionals. And, and what's happening, what I'm afraid we're going to see is we're going to see people that don't want to do that job. And you're not going to get the people you really need serving. But uh, one, you got to make sure your officers are trained, they're professionals, and they're doing their job. And, and let's be honest about it. I mean, the vast, vast majority of the time, police officers are doing what they're supposed to be doing. There's, is there times we're going to have situations like we've seen nationally? Yes, should those things happen? No, they shouldn't have. But I don't think taking away a whole police department or taking away that public safety entity from the from those communities is the road to go. I think with law enforcement, just like any any business, any profession, you're going to have bad actors. Okay, I mean that just goes with it. I'm an attorney. I've worked against some some pretty shady attorneys. Uh, of course, you've heard all the attorney jokes, you know, things like that. Some of them are true. You know, they actually say one of the jokes is how many jo how many lawyer jokes are there. And the answer is three, the rest are true, right? So <laughs> there's a lot, of, a lot of bad actors in a lot of professions. So obviously that does not exclude law enforcement. My concern with law enforcement is that they seem to have, and they've denied this when I talked to them, but this part of the code, I guess, is that they have this code that they don't tell on other law enforcement officials. So um, say, you know, Officer Joe is speeding and Officer Mike sees him speeding. He's not going to go give him a ticket, right? Even though he's not going into an emergency and he's going to McDonald's to get something to eat. Um, I've seen it happen, um, not, not just in here in Missouri, but in other states I live where a police officer will be speeding without lights on and go someplace that there's no emergency. He's just going there. Um, but police know that happens, but they don't do anything about it. They don't tell them. Of course, we're talking about things that are much worse than speeding, obviously. I'm just talking about that as an example. But this code is in effect that they don't tell on each other. So the bad actors are not reprimanded in any way. And again, going back to the riots and the other things we're talking about, if that behavior continues and they get away with it, it's just, it's just human nature that it increases and it gets worse. And pretty soon you've got a very, very bad actor that's getting away with, in some cases, murder um, because no one early on has called him out on it and he's not gotten reprimanded from it. And so my thing with law enforcement that I would really like to do and, you know, training and all that is great, but breaking this code and having, uh, having it where officers are not going to get in trouble for telling on each other that they're actually, um, you know, they're, they're encouraged to say something when they see something. Um, I think that eradicating that bad behavior early on before it gets to that point uh, would be the best case scenario so that it never does get to that point. I just think we haven't done that. We haven't done our due diligence in reporting police officers who are abusive or who are uh, take, you know, go across the line. And then they're allowed to do that so long that now they end up killing somebody. Um, so I know that a lot of things are symptoms of the problem. And I don't want to, I think that a lot of times we go after the symptoms and we don't actually go after the root problem. And so my whole thing is finding the root problem to what's causing this and try to fix that, not the symptoms.